So this film contains scenes of full penetrative sex and sadomasochism, but the one thing that shocked me was Shia LaBeouf's accent. Gowlicam Reviews, Nymphomaniac. Now before I start off this review, I will point something out. Even though this film is being released in two volumes, I saw both volumes back to back at a special screening, therefore I will be referring to this as a whole film, I will not be referring to it as volumes one and two. So Nymphomaniac is the latest film from Danish director Lars von Trier. It is the concluding film in the so-called Depression trilogy, starting off with Antichrist and continuing with Melancholia. It stars Charlotte Gainsbourg and Stenen Skarsgård and a host of other talent, including Stacey Martin, Shia LaBeouf, Christian Slater, Jamie Bell, Uma Thurman, Willem Dafoe and Connie Nielsen. Now the basic plot of this film is uh, Joe, played by Charlotte Gainsbourg, a self-confessed nymphomaniac, is found beaten up in an alleyway by Stenen Skarsgård Seligman. He takes her back to his flat and she regales him with her entire sexual history from the age of two, the age of two mind, to the age of, uh, to the age of 50. Now there is certain controversy surrounding this film, uh, the main one being the fact that this film contains, uh, contains full sex, even though uh, most of the actual penetrative sex is done by um, uh, body doubles and CGI. Uh, also the controversy would be um, uh, Lars von Trier, of course, uh, about, I think it was about four or five years ago now, uh, he made uh, some Nazi sympathiser remarks and was considered persona non grata at the Cannes Film Festival. And of course, very recently, the whole thing with Shia LaBeouf um, doing all the kind of the press stuff. He kind of walked away from a, a Q and A session and also uh, turned up to the Berlin uh, film uh, premiere wearing a bag on his head with the words "I am not famous anymore." I'm not going to comment on all that. It's all bullshit anyway. And uh, yeah, this film for me is a very interesting one. At some parts, I absolutely thought it was deplorable, but most of the time, I thought it was one of the one of the most different films I've ever seen. It really is, it, the epicness of the film really comes through. Great performances, Charlotte Gainsbourg always knocks out of the park and this one is no different. She gives that performance where you can see that this character is uh, vulnerable but at the same time kind of aggressive as well, that really came through in the performance. Stenon Skarsgård is, for want of a better word, the kind of comedy relief of the film. Uh, some of the times when she's kind of telling him these stories, she he, he kind of finds that allegories for what she's talking about, uh, whether it be kind of uh, fly fishing or whatever else, which kind of which was meant to be humorous. Some of it I did find funny, but some of it the really kind of the jet black humor I didn't really get. I mean, there's a whole chapter kind of in the middle of the film uh, with Uma Thurman's character, which I'm not going to spoil here, which was literally. The only reason was kind of played for comedy. It was like some kind of like uh, Benny Hill farce film, really, which everyone's kind of like like roaring laughing at. I didn't really find that funny, to be quite honest. But I did laugh, but not as as much as some people did. Some of it I just didn't really find funny at all. But the one thing I have to talk about is Shia Booth's accent. It where his performance in general. It is really really strange. At some parts in the film, it goes from kind of Cockney to English to Australian to American to kind of a little bit South African. It really is strange. I don't know what kind of action that was and I don't know where the film is set. That's the main thing that I noticed is it's like it looks kind of some kind of European European um, uh, country but it's I think it is meant to be kind of in Britain somewhere. I'm not exactly sure but it is very strange and also what time it's meant to be set in isn't really kind of um, isn't really explored. And I don't know whether that's that, whether that was the kind of a kind of creative choice to kind of make give a sense of kind of um, I don't know, disorientation. I guess I'm not quite sure. Now a lot of people are down on Shia LaBeouf, and I'm not quite sure why. I mean, I haven't seen any of the Transformers films. I haven't seen I haven't seen many of his films. I haven't seen Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which apparently is not very good in at all. So I've nothing against the guy really. I think he gives a, a solid performance in this film, but again, the accent lets it down. It's not. Um, kind of distracting. I mean, when he first started talking, people people were laughing, but then they kind of kind of got into it and kind of uh, settled into the accent, really. But it is really is strange. But apart from that, I think he gave a quite good performance. You know, I mean, he's he's out of his element. I mean, the one person you wouldn't think would be in a Lars von Trier film would be Shia LaBeouf. It really is strange, but I thought he gave a, a solid performance. You know, a, a newcomer, Stacey Martin, plays um, young Joe, and she is in kind of the majority of the first half of the film. Uh, she's actually, she's probably in it about 60% to be quite honest. And she, again, I don't know how much of that kind of, of those kind of nudity scenes is her. 
I mean, I've heard, heard some people saying that, oh, it's not really her that's nude, but it looked pretty re it looked pretty realistic if it wasn't, but I think it, it probably was. Uh, she had a lot to do in the first half of the film. Uh, not Then it kind of, um, kind of reverts to um, Charlotte Gainsbourg being kind of the older version of Joe. But again, she gives a really good performance, uh, really good kind of comedic timing as well. She's quite funny. She seems in real life like a, like a really nice woman, a really nice girl as well. Uh, really, really good um, kind of uh, newcomer performance. And uh, what better way to start your career off than in a Lars von Trier film, really? <laughs> but I think probably the best actor in the kind of the peripheral cast was probably Jamie Bell uh, in the kind of the, I don't know, the last, I don't know, 40% of the film. He plays, is in a few scenes as this, um, this kind of, kind of masochistic, uh, but very polite man. Like women come to him to basically get hit a load of times, basically. But his character is, is like really kind of soft spoken. Like he doesn't say a lot. He's really kind of like like fidgety all the time. And he's really, really kind of creepy, but very, very solid performance. One of the best I've seen from him in quite a while, actually. Very, very good. Jamie Bell is fantastic in this film. On the graphic design and this kind of cinematography in this is really fantastic as well. There's certain scenes in the film where kind of um, things kind of like superimpose onto the screen, which, I, I, which gave a kind of um, a very kind of uh, strange way to the film, which I really quite liked. I mean, it really is hard to review though, because like I said, at some points I actually hated it, but but it really is hard to review, for me at least. It's just, uh, I, I don't think I've kind of fully processed the film yet. It's going to be in my mind for a, a, kind of a long time to come. Uh, also, there's meant to be a, of course, the, uh, the, uh, the version I saw was um, just over, I think, about four hours, I think. Uh, yeah, about four hours. But there was also a five and a half hour director's uncut version uh, that were part, um, that was shown at, um, the I believe the Berlin Film Festival uh, in, in its uncut form. I mean, even me, I honestly don't think I could uh, do five and a half hours for any film, let alone a film as kind of dirty and gritty as this one. It really would be hard. No pun intended. And also, there's a really cool homage to the film Antichrist in this film, which I won't spoil by. I, I mean, it, the, we're in the film, it's not very laughing matter, but I felt like laughing because I was thinking, yeah, this is obviously an Antichrist reference. There's even kind of the music in the background, which I thought was, it was kind of funny, but it wasn't kind of, I don't, I don't know if it was meant to be, but I, I kind of find, I kind of did find that really. I think I'm going to need another couple of viewings to really kind of process the film, in my, in my mind anyway. It is, it's really, I've never, I've, in a long time, I've never had this kind of relationship with a film, it really is, it's, it, it's been on my mind ever since I saw it last night and it's going to be in my mind for a lot, a lot, a, a long time to come, it is, like I say, it's just, it's like, it's like no other film out there, I mean, it's not going to be for everybody, I mean, uh, probably the length is going to put most people off, but if you're a fan of basically films that make you think and make you feel in different ways, this, it, this is a film for you, it, I've said it all before, but it really is hard to review. And a lot of this content in this film had potential to be very, very dark. There is a scene in this in, um, which features two uh, black men, which I, which was kind of play for laughs, but I, I thought that this this situation could go very, very dark, very, very fast, and I was kind of uncomfortable watching it. Really, uh, that was the only thing I really found uncomfortable about it. I mean, the thing is, the film that. I'm not shocked by a lot of stuff, and this film I wasn't shocked by anything really. I mean, people who are not used to kind of seeing like full sex in films, it might be, you know, it might be a bit off-putting, I don't know. But it didn't really shock me in any way that I wanted it to, but it kind of shocked me in other ways that I didn't expect it to. Like I say, I didn't really, I, I had no idea that this film was gonna have this effect on me. It really, it's, it is something else, I've got to say that. It really, it's nothing like, it's nothing like any other film out there, which I really, uh, yeah, I, I, oh man, it's so, it's so hard to kind of portray what I'm feeling, but I don't even know what I'm feeling, but it's interesting, I'll say that. There's a great quote in the Guardian review for this film, which more or less sums up my feelings of this film. Nymphomaniac annoys me, repels me, and I think I might love it. So all in all, a very, very, very fantastic film. Uh, the only problem I had with the film was uh, the some of the most some of the comedy I didn't really laugh at, and I just felt that the that it was a bit too dark at times,
but also a film that kicks off with a Rammstein song is good in my book. So I'm going to give Nymphomaniac a 9 out of 10. So thanks for taking the time out to watch this review. More reviews coming in the future, but until then, please rate, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.